Hello everyone, thank you for being here. This is Goose Auto Works, and this is what we're doing today. Okay, once again, thank you everyone for being here. If you have been here before, welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, stick around. It's bound to be a good time. So in today's video, I'm gonna be working on swapping out my manual crank windows to power windows using a power window kit. Now, you may have plenty of reasons for wanting to do this yourself. For me personally, I hate having to lean over to the passenger side and roll the window down for someone on the outside of the truck. Um, and as you may know, if you have been here before, I am working on an SVT Lightning tribute build with my truck, and part of doing that is doing the interior as well. So because of that, I am opting to use door panels that I pulled from a factory electric window truck. Part of that is so that it matches with what the Lightning has, but then also the switches that come with the kit look like they're straight up out of like a 1980s taxi cab or something. It's just big, it's bulky, it's just not doing it for me. So what I picked up are some of these little guys. And while it's not exactly OEM to what was in the Lightnings, it is strikingly similar to what I have in my Mustang and what is in my wife's Lincoln, which of course are both Ford products. So I feel like it'll have that kind of OEM look and feel to it and just be a lot better than this right here. But the good news is that both of these are five post connections. So what that means is we can use all of the same wiring and same wiring instructions that come with the kit and we shouldn't have any issues. All right, so these are the door panels I got out of the powered window truck. But before I popped those in, there were three things that needed to happen. First, I needed to modify the control panel there for the switches that I'll be using, and I'll show you that in just a second. Um, second thing, I realized there was a pretty large crack on this one and then a smaller one here. So I just did some hot staples in the back and then um, some plastic welder rod on the front and it looks pretty gross but that sanded all flat and so that will cover nicely with paint so I'm not too concerned with that um, speaking of for paint I didn't realize till I got this home but this door was a medium graphite right here which it still is and then a dark graphite at the top um, which is going to be this color right here on the center console so this is actually a little teaser for an upcoming video but as you can see, I've already taken care of the dark graphite and done it in black. Um, but the medium graphite needs to be a dark graphite to match the rest of my truck. So dark to black, medium to dark. Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. And that's what I'm gonna do now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this ready to do the paint. And here are the door panels done along with that center console in the dark graphite and in the black. And there's a little bit of overspray right here, but that's going to get covered with the door handle, so I'm not concerned about it. And so now it's time for the actual window conversion. I'm not showing the actual door panel removal. That's going to vary widely for the audience. But just keep in mind that if you're having any resistance, double check to make sure that there's not a hidden screw or tab keeping that on there. After the door panel is off, you're going to have these little adapter grommets that are going to fit over the stud where your window crank used to be and you're just going to find which one fits over the best. In my case, it was the third one here. I did go ahead and cycle through all of them just to make sure that that was the best one, and indeed it was. But just find out which one works for you and remove that one from each of these two assemblies. There's a larger outer grommet gear as well that the smaller adapter one is going to fit into, and you're just going to want to pick the one that basically fits over your existing stud the best and line up these two notches that are in them. Once you do that, you're going to find the two longer screws that are in this set. They're gonna be different than the others and you're going to thread that into that notch. Uh, be careful because it seems like they are going to want to strip pretty easily though. With this door panel off, I'll take the opportunity to go ahead and grease inside of these tracks here just to give it a little bit less resistance and then also go ahead and check to see what kind of clearance I have between the inner skin and the glass so uh, you can see even if the screw was sticking all the way out 
I'm nowhere near hitting the glass, so don't have any worries there. After you get these gears assembled, they'll need to go inside of the motor arm here. They'll only go in from the back side. So you'll push that through. And then you'll take these little keychain looking rings. And there's a small little groove on the inside on the white part that this will snap into. So you just have to fit that around and get it on there. So let's see if I can do this. See that? With that done, you can start to kind of mock up where you want this to go. Me, I think I've already determined this area will fit well. I'm going to kind of follow this line right here. So it looks something like this. So then you can kind of start planning out where you want your different arms to go. So I'll probably do one like right there, one right there. And then the bottom side here, they actually will only attach from the back side. So I'll have to pull this off and then put them on here. So put this back on, figure out kind of where you need that to go. Where these screws are, you're gonna split the difference on the back. So I can kind of use that to help model and guide where I want to go and probably try to see if I can get away with just using two and see where that gets me. Your next step here is just kind of a step and repeat. So there are going to be two different types of bushings that are included in your kit. There's going to be some rubber bushings and some metal bushings and essentially all you're going to do is determine which hole on the bracket arm you want to mount your screw inside of and then you'll put the rubber bushing in and then insert the metal bushing inside of that and then you'll go ahead and put your fastener through it. All right, here's a look at all of your different wiring harnesses. So we have a wiring harness for the driver's side. You can tell because there's uh, pigtail connectors for two switches. We have our wiring harness for the passenger side, which has one. And then we have this main bundle here, which is going to run our main power to the switches, as well as offer our uh, universal ground and a fuse in it. So uh, I'll set this aside for right now and show you these. So again, this is gonna be the two switches that we have for our driver's side. This is gonna be the one switch we have on our passenger side. And then these little posts here will get made to this little connector. And then that connector is going to be um, connected to the other side of our main harness here. So basically these blade connectors will go through and they'll end up basically connecting on like this and that other switch. But essentially what we have here is our two grounds and then the green and the blue here are going to be our power up and power down and then this red is going to be our main power coming in. So for these I'm going to start off by putting blue to blue, green to green. If by chance I end up moving the switch and up goes down and down goes up, all I have to do is swap these around and I rever reverse the polarity, which will reverse the direction of the motor. And so that will make that right again. It's going to be a lot easier than trying to turn this around, um, which I may not even be able to do because of this. And then um, obviously it'll be a lot easier than pulling these wires out. So. 
that's what we'll start with. So I've gone ahead and run my passenger side wiring and I can walk you through how I did that in just a moment. But first uh, I want to go ahead and show you how we're gonna actually attach this to our passenger side wiring harness. So again, for this, this will go onto the motor itself. And so we'll just do the green to green, blue with blue. And we're just matching up colors on the other side as well. So this is gonna have a little connector like this that's gonna snap into this pigtail here, actually this way. But before we do that, we need to make sure that these are run in the right spots. So when we plug this in, they match together. So first thing, if we look at the bottom, we have our red wire. So we know that our red is gonna go in at the bottom here, all right? So we can go ahead and push that all the way through, see? And then up from that, see this position over here is going to be a brown with a red stripe. So if you look, we have a brown and then we have a brown with red. So this one up here is going to be our brown with red. So I'll take the brown with red right here and I'm going to put it in the upper right spot here. Okay, then that will just leave the brown, solid brown, to go into the last spot. And then we can just take all this and snap it together. There we go. And here's an example of one of the factory switch panels that I modified for the new uh, switches that I got. But, and I know this looks really ugly right now, but once I snap in one of these new trim pieces for the new switches, it covers it up really nicely. So, And here's the driver's side all finished up. Um, wiring is done exactly the same as the passenger side with the blue to blue, green to green. Only exception is we have an extra wire here in this pigtail to be able to control the passenger side. So we'll have obviously our driver's side here, but then we have the ability to control the passenger side as well. Whereas on the passenger is only the single switch. As far as wire routing, I approached it much the same way as I did on the passenger side, utilizing this factory door grommet here. It was a lot harder on this side, both because of the angle that I had to come into it from, from inside the cab, and also because I had an extra wire in there, so that's just more thickness to deal with. So I did have to open up the inside of this a little bit with a razor blade, but take your time, work through it. It will be a lot better of an option as just having wires running loose if you get those caught in a hinge or something like that and it severs you're pretty much screwed as far as wiring from side to side so i've got it running up and over um, a few braces and things that are under my dash here just around the center console area and then again up under my glove box area and as far as my ground and my power this is my ground and then this red wire is my power. So something important to take note of here. If you don't get anything else out of this video, listen to this because this is, you know, where all the magic happens. All right. So what I did first was I put my ground and my power directly onto a battery to make sure that the polarity of everything was good, that the motors themselves worked fine and that the wiring was hooked up correctly, basically. Then I attached my ground and kept the power on to, to make sure that I had a good solid ground, that this was in fact a good grounding point to use. And as far as my power here, I just so happen to already have one of these laying around. So this is a add a circuit fuse jumper. 
and basically this green 30 amp fuse was in this location i pulled it out put the fuse jumper in put the 30 amp back in and then this 25 is the circuit that i'm adding this is for the windows this 30 amp that was in this location that is for my ignition coils amongst other things so i knew that that was going to be a good location to use because it only would have power to it when the key is in the on position right now the key is off i don't have any power to the windows but i cut the key on and both my windows are working so um one thing to know about these jumper fuses here is the fuse that's in line with this wire that is your added circuit two things one that fuse needs to be well or it's highly preferred that that is of a lower amperage than the fuse that you're putting this into so for example i wouldn't try to put this into this 5 amp location for example i use this because it is a 30 this is supposed to be protected by a 30 as well but i put the 25 in here just to be safe and that way i know that everything's going to flow properly speaking of flow this jumper is directional the current that comes through here has a polarity to it so at first i had this in the other direction so if these are the two prongs of the fuse they were in this way and it wasn't working that's why i suggested using the battery to make sure that everything works well because i was not sure about my wiring but once i flipped it around it worked immediately so again this one in the back in line with the wire is going to be your new circuit and if you plug it in one way and it's not working flip it around and try it that way it's easy to tell on these because these actually illuminate when they have power to them so as soon as i plugged it in i saw that those lit up i knew i was good to go so there you have it guys that's really all that there is to it and i'm really happy with the way these door panels turned out uh, i think it looks nice and clean i really would have liked to have used the switches that came with the truck i pulled this out of and while there's probably a way to do it this is just a much more simple way for me and although it's not strictly oem i don't think this is going to raise too many eyebrows um, and it's definitely better than that big old block hanging off the side here so um, they're a little scuffed up after the install and handling so i'll need to touch it up and, and things like that um, all this is just you know dust but um, beyond that i hope that this video was helpful to you um, if you've got any lingering questions or anything that i didn't address or something that you would have just done differently uh, let me know in the comments i do try to get back to everyone and so yeah let me know there if there's something you have more questions on or something that you liked or didn't like or whatever um, beyond that thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one